All right, part three, class seven, beautiful brushwork. I'm going to be attempting to get this guy, something like him, onto here. Um, there's the black and white version. And I'm going to put on my first coat is going to be my Indian yellow. So I'm just going to grab some paint thinner on my brush. Uh, so off to the right side here, just out of the screen, is a big tub of paint thinner. I'm going to grab some of that, put it down on my on my palette. And normally I wouldn't use much paint thinner, but I've got a lot to cover here. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of, so I want it pretty slick. Here we go. Hopefully my arms don't fall off after this. Yeah, I can already feel the absorbency of that panel and all that gesso versus, I mean, all that canvas and all that all that gesso versus when I paint on a panel. So canvas is thirstier. It will soak up any of the moisture quicker unless you're using a lead primed uh, gesso or a lead prime on there, then that's much less absorbent. I don't like to paint on lead prime very much. I don't like the smell of it. I don't, it dries too slowly and it can be very slippery. I want some absorbency. It, is a lead primer actually, do they actually put lead in it now? Oh, I don't know why I'm saying lead primer. I apologize for that. Uh, oil primer. Okay. Yeah, there are, there are, or at least used to be lead prime canvases a lot. Um, but I doubt that that's a thing anymore. Man, I just used a whole tube of yellow, Indian yellow on there, the little, little tiny tube. <laughs> I thought that that would last me the whole painting. <laughs> the uh, gesso that I put on there, I started off with um, three coats of just straight white gesso, and then I added a little bit of yellow into my gesso. Doesn't look like it anymore, especially next to this Indian yellow, but it was probably like 5% uh, yellow to 95% white gesso. And just so there's a little bit of warmth, I didn't need the pure white. It also allowed me to see if I was actually, you know, missing any areas when I kept putting more coats of gesso on there. Are you guys able to hear me over the scrubbing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Michael, how long did you wait in between those three coats of gesso? Uh, I typically will wait about 12 hours. Um, 24 hours is better. Okay. Um, I was running a fan on it. I don't know if that helps or not. Because um, some of the coats I was putting on within about six or seven hours. And I was putting them on fairly thin um, because of that. And I, I just wanted, I wanted it to be pretty smooth. I never did sand this at all. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah. And I put it on with a foam roller, hmm. which really, you know, sped it up. I was actually prepping about four canvases at the same time. So I just mixed a little, put a little bit of paint thinner in this towel just to help it move. It is a oh, shoulder God. workout. Michael, you said you didn't sand it. I no, I did not. But what? normally, it would. is there a reason? Well, if I have a lot of texture on there, like if you put it on with a brush, you know, uh -huh. sometimes that under under uh, texture can be really nice and useful, and okay. sometimes it can be really annoying. Just making sure I get up all the way to those edges. I don't want to accidentally have white areas. So it's almost like I'm putting on a wood stain or a mm -hmm. glorious. I'm just curious if you get this far and then you get called away and you don't come back to it until like the next day and it's dry, will yeah. wipe out still work like it, it would? Will only wipe back to this level, like right. put brown okay. on top of that and then wipe it away. But I wouldn't be able to get back to white. And in fact, in about probably 15 minutes, I won't really be able to get back to white. 
but that's okay because I can come back over it with opaque paint later if I want, you know, and get back to lights. But if I want like this kind of a yellow, right? Yeah. Then I need to do it all now. And now I'm just kind of taking the dry side of my paper towel. In fact, I'm just going to pick up a new paper towel and I'm going to wipe it away. I wipe one more time. And that's just picking up the extra paint thinner that's in there. I just don't want it to be slippery and uh, runny. And that's just a personal preference. I just like it to, you know. There we go. That is one. It doesn't look even, but that's just the light. If I were to move it up and down, you'll see that it's pretty even across mm -hmm. the surface. And I don't even need it to be that even. Okay, my next color and what I'm going to start doing a lot of my drafting drawing with big shapes, I think I'm going to go to let's look at our little chart over here. I, my initial instinct is to either use the brown pink, which is this one here, or the earth red, which is one I use a lot. And what was this second to last color? Oh no, that's the that's the earth red. But I'm sure liking that yellow transparent. No, what is this color? Oh, that's the brown paint here. I'm sorry, my list already got mixed up. My piles. Oh, that's the quinacridone. Oh. Is it a transparent yellow oxide? Yeah. It is transparent yellow oxide. Um, the one be above it is the quinacridone gold. Oof, uh, yeah, I love this color, but I can't afford to use that little tube. Because oh. Those are expensive paints, if I remember correctly. Um, so I'm, what I might do is do the yellow oxide and the brown oxide mixed and see if I get close to that. That makes sense? So I'll mix these two below it to create something kind of like that. Let's see if I'm right. I need to reload my Indian yellow because again, I used all of it. <laughs> so I just used, yeah, a little tube of it. We go. So now I'm just going to start kind of blocking in some of those big shapes, figuring out what's my first mark, you guys. Horizon. Horizon. Correct. Are you then mixing those two shades together uh, on your palette? I'm going to go ahead and throw in a bit of my brown pink. I just want kind of a warmy, goldy, browny <laughs> color. Got it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no real, you know, no math in this for me. It's kind of a, you know, flavor to taste. I'm, I'm that kind of cook, right? You know, you ask me, how'd you make that? Oh, the dash of this and a pinch of that. Um, let's eat up more of that. Transparent yellow. And I just went ahead and mixed in that little bit of the uh, quinacridone gold because I'm not actually going to. That's the wrong color. Dang it. Better read what I'm Michael, this is, this is Barbara. I need to ask you a stupid question about horizons. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. I always thought the horizon is where the sky meets the land. And you have horizon as the end of your stream. So, so why is that? Why are you putting the why is that called the horizon versus you know in the background you have um, some mountains? Why isn't that the horizon? Because I think of the horizon as where the ground meets, not where the mountains meet. Like the earth. Okay. Yeah, so you think of the horizon line on an ocean, right? There's no mountains or anything. Right, that's easy. 
Yeah. yeah. Or picturing a desert, you know, somewhere you can see off into infinity. So it truly wouldn't be where the end of the water is. It'd be slightly higher than that. But, you know, mm -hmm. for me. Um, okay. So I'm going to put right. it up. I'm going to put up my horizon line two fifths of the way up. So 48 inches. Who knows how much two fifths is? Who's good at math here? Dividing 48 mm -hmm. by five, which is not. And look at this T square. I make it 50. What's that? I round, I, I make round it up to 50, and then your yeah, will be 10. So just okay. a little under 10. 20 inches or so. About nine and a half. Oh, I'm so, sorry. 30, sorry, 36. The third, it's actually 38, nine and oh, a half 36. for each fifth. 36, so two fifths 36. of 36. Um, I could even do it, in, so thirds would be 12. It's a little higher, I'm gonna do it to about 16, that will, 18 would be half. So do it at 15 inches. So right there. So it's not. Close enough for government work. There we go. Move it up just a touch. So the top of that is where I'm going to have my horizon. But the main thing is I just don't want it smack. Up, smack. This is a heavy T square. It's meant to be on a desk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back that off and put it back away for the next four years. We'll never see it again. All right, so we've got a horizon line. That tells us a lot. Everything else is kind of in conjunction to that. I'm just going to quickly sketch in some of my large shapes. Make my creek kind of right about here. It's going to come down. Roughly to there. And this side of the creek opens up quite a lot. Put a little turn in it. So it's not so. The edge of my creek is actually a little higher. That's kind of more of some of the reflections. If that's turning out like that, it looks like it just blows open at the bottom. So that's a weird illusion. So your canvas um, looks the reverse of that little um, sketch that you have on the palette. And this looks the reverse of the palette. No, the, the, that little sketch that you have there. Yeah, this? Um, the, the straighter edge of the thing is on the left on that. I, I see it. I, I see that as the. Oh, OK. I, never mind. I'm, I'm seeing. You know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing the reflection of the tree. Yeah. OK. Never mind. Never mind. I don't like the shape that I've already made. So I'm wondering if I can turn, if I put that in, then this one would kind of, what would it do? Kind of go in conjunction with that. It would kind of come in up here. Let's see if that can make sense. I don't know, not liking that either. <laughs> All right, we'll see. Big trees coming down quite a bit below the horizon, play down to about here, kind of about there. Just kind of like a band of dark stuff. 
kind of above that. Top of the tree for this guy is about here. Just notes for myself to make a mess. Um, bigger tree. This one's even taller. I'm going to take it near to the top. The trees kind of make their nice little arch shape right about there, I hope. Don't worry, we'll be able to see these. I'm going to put them in nice big dark shapes here in just a second. I'm just kind of figuring out where stuff is. I want this mountain. It's actually pretty high up, about half of this. So, but I can move mountains. <laughs> kind of figuring out kind of where I want it to go behind this arch. So I'm going to bring that mountain up over here because that way that by having the dark of the mountain back there, it will allow these uh, glowy bits within this arch to show up. That is the focal point basically. So I figure out why is it exciting in my photo and then try to either emphasize that or at least utilize it there. Okay. Couple more lines, and I'm ready to start putting in my big shapes, which will kind of reveal what's going on. And I'm just looking to the lights and darks. Just I'm not feeling this. I think that arch I put in is too weird. So maybe it is more of a canal. All right. I'm making it a Swiss countryside, Switzerland countryside with all their nice waterways and canals. <laughs> I already feel my instincts of like, don't worry about it. You'll fix it in the painting. Don't worry about it. You'll get to it. But I want to actually have, you know, a pretty sound plan. And this, by putting in this kind of stage, even though it's just a crazy mess, right? Well, what is that? Um, Helps me to visualize what is coming. I already don't like this shape, but I want to make sure I don't accidentally do that. And let's figure out what might be more interesting. I'm poking a little more sky. I'm going to take that up. Yeah, good idea. I think. Got one of you guys sending a message of Mike, it looks horrible. Abort, abort. My son is going to be right in here, reflecting down into there. All right. Cool, I am now gonna take that same color pile that I just mixed, Let's add a touch, just a touch of paint thinner to this one because I need it to be a little slicker just for coverage sake and let's attack. Again, I apologize. I'm just going to have to kind of keep jumping in front from time to time. Ah. So this line is too low. Okay, so I'm going to bring that line up to here. Let's see if that helps. Yeah, I think that's going to help. That allows for me to have space for these nice reflected grasses that are picking up the light up above. 
It's going to be an interesting side thing that hopefully will lead the viewer back in and around when I, where I want them and where I need them. I'm going to burn through just tubes of paint here. I guess that's what you get when you cover a big space. Um, this is a, a another basic question. Um, when you use your gam saw, and I see you had a big container of it, and then I I understand that it settles at night or kind of settles. Do you do a whole transfer system, yeah. then clean cam gam uh, saw and overnight, or do you li just let it sit there or? Yeah, I, I keep, I put the lid back on it and let it sit here and then I can uh, pour it off into, I've got, I just saved my pickle jars um, for that. And I've got three, maybe four of them going at a time where I'll just keep letting them settle more and more and more and then pouring off the top. And so one jar eventually will just fill with all this, you know, sediment. And then the next jar will get a little less sediment. And uh And um, yeah, and then eventually I just pour off the top back in. Old ochre is not the color I want, kind of kind of earth. But yeah, I'm really burning through the colors and these colors aren't even gonna show up. So it's gonna be crazy. May as well just squeeze out more paint instead of having to reload over and over and over. Feels like a lot of paint that I just squeezed out there. We'll see. I'm hoping too that after you know getting this initial layer in there, that the paint will just or the canvas will just be less thirsty, right? It'll already have some paint to drink and Amsol to drink. Menacing. Would it have made a difference if it had been primed with fast mat? Uh, yeah, it'd be slightly less absorbent. I, I just like the sandiness of the fast mat, but yeah, it is not as absorbent as gesso. I but keep reading about um, Michael Harding non-absorbent primer. Yeah, yeah, that one's really slick for me, but I'm almost thinking like, what if I combine that with other, and I actually am liking that I want it to absorb to a degree. Um, I will end up utilizing some of that quality of what's going on. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely, there's so many variables, right, in our painting. And, you know, you can ask anybody what's the right one, and they're just going to tell you their favorite one, because there is no right or wrong. So it becomes up to you. Some people only paint on oil prime surfaces. Some people only paint on linen. Some people only paint on panels. Some people only paint on really rough canvas. Um, you know, want the more impressionistic kind of Russian look to it. Um, others, you know what I mean? It's just, as you as you continue to experiment, and try new things, you're just gonna to begin to develop a taste or you know a, a preference. And so, you know, that's why I hopefully, hopefully, I never come across as dogmatic. I hope that nothing, you know, you hear me say, you go, you know, tell your next teacher or your you know painting buddies, well, that's not what Mike says. And mm -hmm. it's these are all just tools, they're all just experiments. They're all, you know, we're all learning and I'm constantly, constantly testing everything that I think is true, everything that I, you know, 
I just, I'm, I'm so curious about the, you know, the colors. I'm so curious about the mediums. I'm so curious about the brushes. I'm so curious about the, you know, how do they help me to convey whatever it is, whatever message. And sometimes, you know, one substrate or, or color or brush quality or whatever is right for one story that you're trying to tell and not for the next one. So that's where Michael, the experimentation comes in too. Is, is that the brown pink? It's uh, yellow, transparent earth yellow, transparent earth red, or oxide red, oxide yellow, and brown pink all mixed together in varying amounts. But I mean, for being a 36 by 48, this is sure some fast coverage, right? Like, sure is. It's magic. <laughs> Magic, magic. And I'm really not measuring. I'm just kind of grabbing into each pile, mixing them together. Because again, this is all going to be underpainting. This is all going to be, for the most part, kind of covered up and... Uh, Missing something pretty important in this painting here. Mm -hmm. Reflections. Yep. So now that I kind of got those shapes figured out, I can kind of start to uh, line up some edges because reflections come straight down, basically. Easiest way to do it. So I can first, I can say, okay, from the base to the top is, you know, 19 inches. So then from the base to the bottom, it's going to go off the screen here. How I because remember I lowered my horizon line, so it's way down here. So let's measure from this branch here to the base is about eleven and a half, and then here eleven and a half. So that branch, if I go straight down, is right about there. That's just a kind of a quick cheat way for me to kind of make sure I kind of got stuff lined up. Some darker colors, I can retain my bank. Versus my reflection, it's lighter. All right, same thing over here. Let's take this branch here, measure it's 10 inches, 10 inches right about there. And if I draw a straight line down, it is. Oh, straight line, right about there. Does uh, Michael, um, does that reflection of, depend upon the angle of the sun? No, the reflection doesn't really. It, it, it uh, is determined by the angle of me, like am I standing? Oh, okay. <laughs> and I know that I'm standing <laughs> high level. Like I'm literally just standing up. I'm not sitting down. I'm not on elevated ground. I'm literally standing on. Well, now a river, what used to be a dirt road. Um, and uh, and so that basically at eye level, it's easier. That's where I can get that kind of mimicking of shape. Uh, okay. And a lot of times I just use that if I'm unsure, especially when I'm making up a reflection. And it just kind of feels right, you know? So this, okay. This there, there. So this kind of comes across here. My mountain is further back, so it won't actually reflect the same. So it'll be lower. Big shapes, big shapes, big shapes, darks and lights. Michael, can you explain your measurement again? Well, I'm just figuring that, you know, if I'm at eye level, basically, it's not a true science by any stretch, is that if the, I go to the base of the tree and the top of the tree, and that is, you know, here is 16 or whatever, 17 inches. So then I would go here and say, okay, the base of the tree is 
you know, down here. So I'm just going to paint my reflection off. Um, and then the same with here. And then I'm just looking for straight lines down of where branches are. Again, measuring from there to there, 13 inches, there to there. Oh, actually, I, I measured from the horizon line. So that's why I got to be careful. I, I want to go to where the tree and the ground meet. Um, then I can go to where the top of the mountain is, roughly seven, seven, but I'm going to make the mountain further. I think. Again, all this water is made up. So it's just my goal is to make it. So at least people don't question it. <laughs> it doesn't need to be perfect, but I don't want people questioning it, which gets tricky with reflections because you can't just take the top half and flip it and mirror it on the bottom. You have to change like the grasses I had to do separate, the trees I had to do separate. Um, okay, now I'm just going to take my some of this lighter color, this transparent yellow. I'm just going to cover. So the way Bob Ross did it for so many years, just pulling it down is completely wrong. Oh, no. I, I'll do some of that, too. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, I just want to get some map. You know, um, if I made it like the reflection, like the tree, the top of the tree was here, right, it would look weird. It looked like I was up above you know, floating a little higher. So yeah, you know, when you're out at a lake or a pond or whatever that has nice reflections, if you can just experiment, just see what happens if you get up on a platform or a little bit elevated and then see what happens if you uh, sit down or lay down even, then the reflections become much different, the angles. So the reflections for the most part are determined by the angle of the viewer. Mm. I'm just always waiting for one of you guys to be a scientist and say, <laughs> right, Mike, your whole lifetime of preconceived notions about how reality works is wrong. So, Michael, I'm a little confused. How, how does the mountain cast? I see the mountain is very far away. How does it casting a shadow that far forward? It's not a, ref a shadow. It's a reflection. A reflection. Yeah, and I'm not. That's what I, I don't think I would do that because it's not the same disc measurement. Yeah, you are mm -hmm. right. So that's why I don't think I will have that. But these, uh, the trees meet here and make this arch. So I want that in there. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank Good you. Question. Good question. All right. Done that. Now I get to have the fun part. I'm going to grab my umbers. I'm just going to mix them all together because I'm being lazy. And <laughs> Let's mix that in there. We just want some darks. And now we can start to give ourselves a little bit. Um, let me just brush this out real quick. So I took my big, my big brush because it come by. Michael, this is just such a great way to block in your whole design, the composition, the elements, everything. Um, but then you're, I mean, do you ever do this straight to color? Yeah, absolutely. That's actually kind of how I came to this a lot of times is there sometimes like when I'm out doing like at the ocean and stuff where I can just start knocking in, you know, thin washes of color. And uh you know, you can do that. My buddy Anton Pavlenko does that a lot, even though his paintings will end up very thick and juicy. He mm -hmm. kind of lays in this kind of thin color or pastelists do that a lot, right? Where they will do like a watercolor under painting. Right. Just kind of knock in the big areas of color and get it covered and kind of get your map drawn. Sorry, experiment just to move a little bit. Because I mean, now to put color over this, don't aren't don't you really kind of have to wait for it to dry up a little bit? Uh, I mean, kind of, ideally, but I mean, I'm putting it on pretty thin, mm. quite thin.
I feel like if I were doing something that size, it would take me a month. That's right. I yeah. know. All it took me was my arms falling off. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's absolutely, it's so interesting. And I'm having so much fun doing it. Yeah, I'm I'm in a um a group of uh three other artists, um, one from Brazil and two from um uh one's in Hawaii or Washington, depending on where he's at. And then the other one, can't remember where he is. But anyways, we meet on Sunday mornings and we just talk art and business. And then every day we have a um uh where we check in with each other and we have to tell each other our number one goal for each day, like mm -hmm. business goal or, you know, whatever it is, our number one thing. What's the first thing you're going to do when you get to the, get to the studio? Um, you know, if it's something hard that you've been putting off or, or, or it's something you're really working on, like a big overarching goal. But I was telling them, um, anyways, I love that group. It's so invaluable that every morning, I check in with them, you know, we just send each other messages and we just respond and every evening we check back in and tell each other our plans for the next day. Hmm. An accountability group, that's hmm. the name of it. Yeah. It's so good and they're, yeah. Um, it's been wonderful for me to be, you know, cause otherwise I just get in here and I get distracted, mm -hmm. uh, especially by emails, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, um, hmm. all the stuff that can be so, it's made to be addictive, right? Um, but anyways, that's beside the point. The point was that in our Sunday conversations, um, we, uh, so I'm having a hard time here. It's very slippery. So now when I want to put on my darks, maybe this brush just has too much paint thinner in it. Um, I may just have to let it sit for about a couple minutes and soak up some of that paint thinner. But right now I'm going to come in with my darks. The point of the previous story about the group was... Oh, I was telling them about these paintings, about these wipe away under paintings, um, you know, and I love how they glow. And oftentimes I feel like, man, I just hardly want to paint over them because sometimes they're just so beautiful. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I do find myself more and more just kind of keeping them, hanging on to them, um, studying them. And they were just like, well, why do you keep painting over them if you're getting better and better at them and enjoying them? so right. very much and people seem to be responding well to them yeah why why aren't you just doing that like at least a series of them mm -hmm. and I, that was such an epiphany moment because you know when you decide in your head oh these are underpaintings always right these are stud value studies and whatever else uh just getting my design you're just kind of like well i guess even though it's gorgeous and even though it's or really pretty and i had a great time i guess it's now i need to paint over it um mm -hmm. so they're just like no let's do it and that's where the idea for the illuminated tones came in where i was like well it's not like anything i've really seen you know it's pieces of lots of stuff i've seen but uh so we you know that's where i was like oh i guess i need my own name or whatever it is this is um or you know i don't know if this will be this will probably get painted over the top of but uh um anyways that's where that came from was just Literally, it's so interesting. Sometimes you have to have kind of an outside person looking in to just question what it is your preconceived notion or your, you know, whatever weird dogmatic uh, belief was. And they're just like, you know, why? Why can't that be the thing? If you mm -hmm. just love it and you keep experimenting and you're going to keep pushing it and you're getting better. And yeah, I mean, it was kind of cool. Like Eric. Uh, you know, Plain Air Magazine saw it and was like, hey, would you mind showing our class that? And that's how I got under that thing, you know, um, onto the, the daily, whatever, Art School Live that you guys saw. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and did you ever post, you know, because you, the clock ran you out on that one. So, did you ever go back and post? Yeah, there was a part two. And I never, uh, oh, where I glazed in, that was part two, part two that you guys saw. No, I never did finish it. In fact, I kind of felt like I ruined it during going in and glazing it. So it's going to take some surgery. Mm. Uh, 
Um, but that's all right. It was fun. They're all experiments. Um, I just went too dark is all. So I just need to come back in and lighten areas. But that just means that I probably will need to do opaque. And funny thing is, even when I was painting it and putting all those glazes in, I was like, don't worry about it. You can just come in and wipe all these glazes off here after the video is done. But I just, uh, then we had class and then I got distracted and da, 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 da. came back and went, oops, I forgot. It's dry. <laughs> So just kind of marking in some big dark spots, kind of giving myself some of my drawings. I'm creating a third value, right? I had my darks or my lights in my mids. And now I'm just creating a third value of darker darks that will help me to even plan it out better. And uh, this is a workout, you guys. <laughs> Did I even bother going into the gym this morning? Holy cow. And skip the gym and put weights on your wrist. Yeah, I know. Boy, that would really do it. Holy cow. kind of fun to you know i'm just kind of beginning to visualize you know where's the denser parts of these trees where's the more transparent thinner spots where the you know the light's coming through the leaves where's the uh where's the light come striking different parts of it what parts are in shadow what parts are in light All very abstract, isn't it? Really abstract. It's becoming. It really starts to develop. Hopefully. About ready to take my big brush and frost it again here. And kind of, because right now they're just big, kind of blocky square brush strokes that I'm putting on, just kind of. Again, I'm still just kind of feeling it out. I'm mapping a little bit as I kind of go along here. Kind of stepping back onto my back foot every once in a while so I can get a tiny bit of distance from it. You know, see how things are fitting in together. And I really am just keeping my brain in a fairly abstract mode um, and just not thinking really things except for lights and darks. The big brush again, just to kind of smush it out, and then I'm going to start coming in. I think I might need more darks. Let's get some of the dark darks in there where I do want them. Oops, reflections. See, I keep forgetting those reflections. So looking up, dark to start, dark to start. Another arch. Hands right up there. 
arch. Doesn't even hardly make it into this one. Almost all those colors I did the uh, little experiment with on the side of transparency is all gone. I've just been slowly merging all those tiles into my paint. Mm -hmm. Waste not, want not. Michael, do you ever paint figures anymore? Uh, I'm working on one right now, kind of. It's for a vineyard, though. It's uh, one of a gentleman picking the grapes. You can hardly see them. Basically, it's obscured by the vines and everything kind of a from underneath slightly looking up at him as he's picking gently cutting some grapes off the vine and putting them in a bucket but no I don't do much I, I've got a painting of my daughter that I've been slowly working on um, most of my figurative stuff is just pictures of my daughter paintings that aren't for sale she's a good model When the light's really nice, you know, and we're out doing photo safaris, she'll just like, you know, she always looks nice, she likes to dress up sometimes, even to go out and shoot photos. All right, I'm going to scrub some red into where that sun is going to be. Warm up that area. I measure that, but anyways. All right, squeeze out extra paint thinner on this big brush and let's blend, push all that down together and then come in and start doing subtractive and hope I didn't take too long and I can actually still get in and do some subtraction. So this should be where it starts to get a little more fun to watch, I hope. Oh, it's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, again, it's like a giant slow Polaroid picture, hopefully. Mm -hmm. And this is a dry brush, right? Fairly dry. It's the one that I actually put on the yellow with at the beginning. Okay. So there is some paint thinner in it, which, you know, might be better if it was fully dry. I don't know, but it's nice and slick. Ooh. Man, that is glary. I'll, I'll come down back and put... Uh, vertical brush strokes so I can get rid of some of that glare here in just a second. But right now I just don't want all the brush marks to be the same so I kind of go in different directions. Oh, <laughs> yeah. this brush does feel like it has weights on it. It's heavy. <laughs> you know what I'm realizing? Uh, it's so interesting that your under paintings are so vivid when, you know, there's a lot of muted tones when you begin to overlay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And it, yeah, and again, it's mostly for me, but some of this will show through. And, you know, again, the, the power of me naming this thing, and, you know, it's just like a working title, right? But Illuminated Tones is that I'm not beholden to anything because now it's mine. I'm not trying to paint tonalists. I'm not trying to paint illuminists. I'm not trying to paint 
impressionism. I'm not trying to, you know what I mean? I'm painting my own thing. So that means there's no rules. Whatever I do is the new rule. <laughs> I can't be wrong. It's mine. And I like it. And I'm going to abuse it until... Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's the last thing I need is somebody coming along and telling me the rules of my new paint style <laughs> thing as I'm still figuring it out. I mean, maybe, but that's that's for the, you know, the art historians, you know, that'd be awesome if somebody decided that it was worth knowing at some point and then they could look back and then they would make up rules for whatever it was that they thought I was doing. <laughs> that's art historians' job. So, make us feel dumb about not knowing. The thing that's really great about technology these days, you know, just think if there were uh, videos of some of the master painters painting, right. you know, how, how instructive that would be. Oh, and yeah. there are so many good painters around today and, and we have the privilege of being able to see, see them actually work. Yeah, it's really neat. And yeah, yeah. I mean, cameras were just coming around with Monet. There are some videos of Monet, but mostly he's just standing there smoking cigarettes, looking at his <laughs> Doing a French thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Straightening his beret and... <laughs> I mean, to me, it's so interesting to hear an artist's thought process you know, why they do the things that they do while they're doing it, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and you really see how little we actually know. <laughs> like, what we're actually doing is just... No, uh, I think it's really cool. Yeah, somehow it's interesting, too, because this larger scale, I don't know why it feels like a bigger art lesson. <laughs> <laughs> um but but it's but it's it, it i don't know there's a there's a sort of a different quality to seeing this whole real process for me anyway wow oh, <laughs> oh in trees oh my god interesting very interesting now i can actually see it better i'm gonna move our little experiment away because i'm gonna get a little crazy in this push in this Move this out one more time, and then so is it really as dark as it seems now since you took the light off of it? I mean, it's not that now. That's I mean, I yeah, that's dark in my studio right now. I'm like tripping over my wires and stuff, but it, but I'm actually looking at the monitor while I paint. Mm -hmm. Because all the subtle shifts and details that were there when the lights are were on are gone now, and it's very it's big blocks, very dark black blob. Yeah. Well, you should get one of those brushes that's about like eight inches across to do your. <laughs> you know what? I probably do have one in my little uh, uh, closet thing over here. Um, wardrobe <laughs> yeah i remember the narnia books mm -hmm. pull out the magic brush from the wardrobe yeah i land the witch in the brush so do you have enough light in your studio to work without artificial light uh, I mean, yeah, kind of. I've got, you know, a west-facing window and a south-facing window. Oh, okay. You know, right next door, I actually put in skylights over there. Um, like those dome lights, the two mm -hmm. lights. Mm -hmm. Pretty nice, but boy, it gets weird when, like, clouds are moving quickly overhead. And it's like, dark, bright, dark, dark, bright. 
<laughs> okay, so we, I think we can really begin to see, I'm noticing one thing is that the center of this tree appears to be over here. And I didn't intend for this to be a trunk. Um, I intended it to be kind of a, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my first tree pruning and move that over. Cause I want my trunk to be in fact here. So then that, you know, taller part of the tree is most likely kind of above that. All right, one more brush through. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna simply do vertical long brush strokes. And that is, I wouldn't do that if it wasn't on video. Um, Cause when I turn the lights back on, oh, well, we can just do it. You'll see it's gonna be all sorts of crazy glare. So my hope is that by doing yeah. big vertical brush strokes, just kind of softly, yep, see the glare starts to disappear. Mm -hmm. That's where when I have all my other lights set up, that can be kind of useful. Um, yeah, and again, my goal is to keep working on video quality, sound quality, all that stuff for next um, next classes um, in the fall. And I did um, I did cancel. I'm not going to do the beginner class. I just the same thing talking to that group of guys i was telling them about it you know doing a beginner class because that's what um, the mastery's program asked me to do and i was kind of honored that they asked me but uh, i wasn't excited about it and they heard it in my voice and they're like why are you teaching i'm like oh because you know they asked me to they needed somebody to do it and i've kind of <laughs> and i was just like and they're like but you don't want to do it don't do it you, you're so busy don't yeah, need yeah. Uh, I wasn't excited about it either. I just want to continue with you on this level. Is that possible? Yeah, we'll, get, we'll get back to that in the fall. Oh, um, no. That's six yeah. months from now. Oh, I know. But that is weird. Um, there so, might be, uh, you are you to... doing any like, um, oh, my God. Sitka. Yeah, got, Sitka yeah, got, in July. Sitka, and I've got Manuka. So, Michael, when you do Manuka or Sitka, are you teaching or just painting on your own? Oh, no, no. I'm teaching. It's a full, like, all day long workshops. For oh, three wow. Okay. Yeah, so you're, what, what happens if it rains at, at Sitka or Manuka? What's the deal? Uh, you just go inside and paint. They both have really, they'll mostly be inside. They have beautiful okay. um, indoor studios. So I have a question for you. This, this is Susie. Yeah, no, I know. <laughs> yeah, you can hear my Chicago accent. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, um, uh, but um, uh, so you would be lecturing or walking around or teaching? Yes. yes. I mean, like, are you coming around? It's all of it. Okay, super. Because once I, I'm so disappointed. Oh my God. I went, uh, like, is it 10 years ago on a, um, international painting trip my husband gave me for an anniversary present uh -huh. in Italy the teacher was from Stillwater Minnesota and I had a good friend that lived here I worked with and then she moved back there and she never even was around she was doing her own paintings and it's like 10 years ago and oh, no, you can't get rid of me Oh, that's um, fabulous. There's, there's a couple of people um, that have been in workshops of mine in the past, um, and I will ask them to speak in just a minute here. Oh, OK. Because I mean, like, I have such regret that I didn't, because I'm only like 15 minutes from OSA, that I didn't do your all day workshop last yeah, so year. That's what it will be. It'll be all day, but it'll even be longer because you, we stay out there. So Yay. we can paint at sunrise if anybody wants to wake up with me. We can paint all Not day. me. <laughs> I might mean, want to wake up with you. No, thank you. But <laughs> yeah, I'm not that kind. Oh, no. So I was just kind of curious. I just wanted to make sure that because I treasure and I'm so grateful for the gift of having been able to take like, I don't know, I think two years with you. If you, if I wouldn't want you to be like that, Cammie Paulson, where she just went off and said, I'm busy painting. Don't talk to me. 
No, we hang out the whole time. We have meals together. We, um, oops, long brush. So uh, yeah, I want to hear experiences. And then what about, um, so uh, to clarify my thinking, you will not be doing an all day at uh, OSA. Not as of yet, but Manuka is, oh, not Manuka. Yeah, Manuka is with OSA, but it's at. Oh. Well, like, have you ever considered, you might hate me for saying this, but doing private classes at your house or someone's house or my house? <laughs> yeah, I, I have done it in the past. Oh, you have? Okay. I have to charge a lot is the problem. I don't care. All right. I, I would pay. I mean. Yeah, and it's fine. And what I do is, um, you know, set the price. And then basically if you bring a friend, um, oh. you can, it's almost that it's just a little bit more to have two people. Um, but that, that's nice. And then you get all your questions. And what I've done in the past is I did one-on-one -on -one plain air classes. Okay. So we would just go out and meet somewhere. Um, you know, I've got a whole lot of spots I can just recommend for people um, and do that. Otherwise, um, and I'll set this up on my website again, because that's the other thing I'm talking with that group of artists about. Okay. Some of them are doing that because, you know, having one-on-one -on -one, uh, long form critique I know would be really useful for some artists. And uh, so offering that, um, yeah. And then, yeah, I'll get it set up, Susan, and I'll let you know. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, and the, the, the master, master class, that is still filled. Is that correct? It is still filled, yes. Cougars, okay. Michael, but uh, are you going to have the mentor program uh, next, uh, next year for beginners? Hmm. I, I, well, the class I was going to do, I canceled it. I just, yay. <laughs> I didn't want to start as a beginner. Well, you don't have to do it, but it would be for other people. But, um, but uh, yeah, I just didn't want to teach it. Um, but I do understand. I want to, I want to somehow provide, you know, cause a lot, all the students are at different levels, you know, there's, mm -hmm. some mm -hmm. students, you know, in selling in galleries and, uh, you know, going professional. And I don't even know why you bother talking to me. And there's others of you that, you know, literally could be greatly served if I just had some more time to say, these are the, you know, these are the brushes, these are the mediums, these are the colors, this is, you know, the very fundamental stuff. Um, but I, what I'm thinking, so here's my game plan right now, is that I'm actually going to start filming some lessons and selling them for, you know, whatever, inexpensive. And they'll be like, one hour or two hours long and you can just buy them inexpensively individually and you can put together the plan that you want and that you need so i would have the beginner all the way through and if you didn't need the beginner stuff you don't buy the beginner stuff um and then i want to do the uh imp you know the one-on-one -on -one stuff but again time is my greatest that is the hardest thing for me is i just don't have as much time i'm i, I keep over committing i keep saying yes to too many things Oh. Um, and uh, so I need to figure that out. I, I need to learn to say no and prioritize better. But um, well, the other, don't we all? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is, that's it. But I just need well, to figure out what's the most important part. I love, love, love teaching. Okay. Oh, well, and your natural oh, born oh. teacher. Oh my God. Thank you. I'm going to keep, I'm going to start wiping away while we're talking. Um, okay. So I'm just, I just grab my little white brutal paper towel and I'm just kind of, kind of look for the big, outside shapes that I think are interesting, kind of remembering center of my tree, da, 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 da. let's get some negative shape in here. Um, and maybe there. Um, I, uh, I do enjoy the workshops. I love painting plain air and working with people on plain air. So during the summer, that's my preference is there's nothing worse. Plus my studio becomes really hot upstairs. Um, and, uh, so, you know, I, if I'm teaching on a beautiful day and I'm just looking outside and know all my painter buddies are out there painting or, you know, whatever else, I just feel guilty. So I want to be out there. I want to be open. You know, our painting season can be pretty short here in Oregon. So that's why I don't teach in the summer. Last summer was kind of a special uh, thing. I did it, but, but that's the only time I've done it. Otherwise, I, I prefer to teach the workshops and being able to be outdoors. Um, so, but what about, I, I mean, I never thought I'd really enjoy these online ones, but they're superb. And not only that, I feel like I'm in your studio. I don't know if 
the others feel that way. And I love seeing everybody's face here because I feel like we're all painting together. Yeah, so that's that's what's so great about doing that in the winter. And okay, the so but uh, uh, you're not disappearing. You're gonna come like September, do some more of these. Yeah, so probably in September I'll do a short one, like a four week one. Okay. In October I'm um, gonna be hopefully doing a workshop in Italy, in Tuscany. It's, you guys are all invited. Yeah. Guess what? I did that one in Tuscany ten years ago nightmare i told you about it um uh, okay uh, the one thing about it was have you done one in italy i've assisted at one in italy okay so the italians of course this was 10 years ago they turned off the heat we stayed in a 13th century cathedral yeah they turned off the heat and everybody was freezing and then it rained for four days it was in tuscany so but i mean like I would do that one again. Yeah, well, if, if it was you, only if it was you and you. Uh... Michael, it, it, the one in Tuscany, who are you doing that through or with? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. With a friend of mine who owns a 10 bedroom villa, a gorgeous, gorgeous villa on top of a, a hill overlooking Luca in Tuscany. Oh, oh Luca is gorgeous. One. Yeah, so we'll do a day trip to Luca. We'll do a day trip probably either to the coast. They also have these mansions with the, the most gorgeous. Oh, wow. Wow. Then, okay. Um, yeah. And it includes, so the, it's a, an expensive workshop, of course, but it includes all of your meals mm -hmm. and room and there. board. And the villa is gorgeous. The view is to die for. Okay. And uh, the, it's a good cook. And it's actually a British guy. He was a, a television producer who bought this. He and I became friends. His name's Ben Gooder. He's awesome. He's super fun, super cool. Uh, we've been talking about me getting back out there since before COVID. So we're finally making it happen. He, uh, he's got a new wife and she luckily is a big, big fan of my art. And she's the one that's really been pushing and keeps reminding him like, have you got a hold of Mike yet? Got a hold of Mike. At least that's the story he tells me. I like it because it makes me feel good. Um, so I'll choose to believe it's real, uh, but uh, <laughs> gorgeous. It's um, it's a, he owns a his villa is on almost the top of the hill with a great big view looking down over a little tiny tiny town, uh, then down into a bit of a valley, then back up a little rolling hill, and with you know the fields and the, well, a lot of forest actually that you see. It's really kind of out there. And then, um, but he has all of orchard that he's on. And then down below are the vineyards that we can also go and paint at and visit. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's magnificent. Big, big, beautiful swimming pool. Uh, we eat outside when we can under this big uh, grape vi or vine covered awning area or whatever you call that, like shaded by the grapes. It is, it's my dream it's like well, what i think about when i think about where i would like to retire or where i if i could live or own a place anywhere in fact when i was out there last time i was even we actually he and i actually went around and looked at properties that were for sale so i was like so serious about like man i should own a house here <laughs> they're they're reasonable oh, michael like when i went that time like it was maybe 10 years ago okay i had i <sighs> got hung up and sucked into buying all this expensive equipment like the plein air easel blah 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 um i had to get for each one of my paints like a printout sheet with the chemical balance it was the law going through amsterdam yep I have and then that. you wouldn't believe it they threw everything on the ground when i was going through customs broke the easel i mean then I heard some people don't have to bring out equipment that it's there already. What do you have to still bring out your equipment? So uh, I'll have to talk to him. A number of years ago, he did have a bunch of stuff, but it was so. The other cool thing about it is he's a musician. So oh. he built a great big music studio. And by big, I mean really big. Like it can, like it, it has plenty of room for probably 12 to 15 students. It's like the OSA upstairs space, even bigger. Um, and so anyways, that's become an art studio, painting studio, and he does have a whole bunch of easels in there. So uh, I would just have to talk to him to see if he's 
um, expanded it to have more plain air stuff, but we can always just drag the easels out, you know, and paint with those. Um, well, so can you bring a Sherpa like my husband? <laughs> yeah, you can. Okay. But yep, the, uh, having a, somebody else with you, um, whether they want to paint or not, is mm -hmm. completely welcome. And he, uh, you know, we'll have some activities for other people. Mm -hmm. um, like the last time we had a masseuse out there a couple times. We also had a, a guest cook chef come out and we got to help work with him if you wanted. And uh, we had, a, yeah, it's awesome. You can go with him to the markets and pick mm -hmm. out fresh produce and stuff that. if you want. What, what city is it again? This was in Tuscany. That Yeah, it's in Tuscany, but it's a, up, way out in the middle of kind of nowhere. Well, not way out, but it's up in the mountains or hills above Luca. Wow. What, what is it called? It's gorgeous. It's one of the walled, intact walled cities. It was oh never God. defeated. So, Michael, are you going to advertise that on your website? Yeah, yeah, we just, I just talked to him this weekend to kind of start finalizing it. It will be somewhere on the dates of October 7th through the 21st. Oh. Um, I could have that whole time if I want, but I'm not sure I can find enough students. The class will only be seven students okay. as well, so it's nice and small. Oh, that's good, yeah. Also, October 5th is my birthday, so I like that date. <laughs> yeah, then. Yeah, you're well, husband. unfortunately, I'll be in, well, fortunately or unfortunately, I'll be in Japan at that time, so. Oh, cool. Oh, well. October of this year or next year? This year, October. Oh, my. So I'll be in Japan, too. And that <laughs> oh. Hope that it's awesome and that we can, um, I, I would love to reserve that, you know, that or figure out another time that works that's even prettier, but I think it's a really beautiful time. The vines are, you know, turning. Oh, yeah. Up and the um, weather's not as hot um, even though it does have a nice swimming pool and stuff um, so you can That's see gorgeous. I'm just wiping away yeah. starting to reveal your painting. Oh, wow. different levels it's gorgeous My, well, Michael do you know Kat Ring Katarina Ring I know she's so. from she's from Coronado California oh. but she lives in Luca and she is a fantastic artist and oh, she no. She um, paints and she hikes all over, and I I love her paintings. You, you ought to meet her. She is so fabulous. Yeah, maybe you can send me a, a message with that name since I don't not able to write down right now. But yeah, okay. Would, it'd be neat to have a guest artist or somebody, or when we do go into Luca, maybe we could go to the studio or something. Um, yeah, Luca is really cool, especially if you're like into fashion and shopping and stuff. <laughs> very fashionable. Uh, town. It was kind of funny because some of the ladies at the workshop that I was helping at uh, were just, that's all they wanted to do. They only wanted to be shopping and they were just kind of upset that we weren't in Luca <laughs> closer. I guess they kind of thought we were going to be a little closer. Um, but anyways, she, Luca's a really she, cool. Yeah, she could show you all kind of places to do because she paints. She goes all over Italy and paints, but uh, mm -hmm. Luca is where she lives. She owns a house there. And uh, she just went back from California, went back to Luca, and she's painting again. Oh, my God. Huh, what's, cool. her, what's her name? Her name is uh, Katarina, or Katri I think it's Katarina Ring, R-I-N-G is her last name. And she's on Facebook. She's easy to find. And she paints with Jeanette. Um, oh, God. What's Jeanette's last name? Not Heron. Uh, um I don't know what I can't remember, but I'm friends with both of them. Jeanette's in um, Florida, in, in Florida, down south in Florida somewhere. But she went and painted with Kat, with Kat and um, they'd paint the same things, use the same palettes, basically, but it would be so different. It would just be wonder, wonderful to see. Yeah, neat. To watch them. I'll send you her name. Thank you. That's, yeah, it's that's beautiful, up. that painting. That's really a great yeah. layering. When COVID took over, it really kind of put a damper on all that stuff. And I just kind of actually almost kind of forgot. And so I was so glad when he reached out and presented the idea again. And um, it really is kind of, you know, what I was just talking about, of like saying no more often and, and uh, being really starting to kind of figure out, you know, what do I actually want from this art career? Oh. Uh, 
and just I've been kind of lucking my way through a lot of it, um, you know, with hard work, but with just kind of, I don't have a game plan. <laughs> I just kind of just keep doing stuff. Well, um, I say Orwick School of Art. <laughs> yeah, you got to figure out how to say it in Italian. Um, but yeah, exactly. And so I do like teaching, but it takes up a lot, a lot of time because the amount of prep that I put into this class is way more than the class time we spend together. Um, you know, pulling out all those photos, um, mm. planning and, you know, all the emails and everything else. Um, well, you spend three or four hours for every hour that you're with us, yeah, at least. Say that's true. The whole day before, or I'm, a lot of the day, I'm spent thinking about it, you know, writing out things, uh, I or even reading books of like, you know, how have other artists, you know, in my art books, how did they teach it and how did they present it, you know, if I'm not exactly sure how to present a thing, because I've been painting long enough that some stuff I'm like, I just know it. I don't know why I know it or how I know it, but it's just, you know, from trial and error. So uh, like when my daughter was um, learning to read, I was like, how do I teach somebody how to read? I don't remember learning how to read. I just read, you know, now. Um, it's or even skiing was the same thing. I was kind of like, yeah, I don't who remembers? Know. So, Michael, have you thought of this idea? I'm sure you have because you're very innovating. Um, you would do different, like you say, you like painting outdoors in Portland or in the area of posting on your website. Uh, today, I'm painting at, um, you know, near your house somewhere and five, maybe four students could paint with you. That way you could get your a painting done for your for selling and then for plein air. Have you thought about do, just posting your locations where you're going to be painting? Uh, I mean, kind of. Plein air is harder for me. So usually, you know, a lot of teaching, I have to be organized. Um, mm -hmm. Just because I don't get to do it as much as I would like. Um, you know, by the end of the summer, I'm, caught, I'm back into the swing of it and everything. But uh, uh, I don't know. A lot of my plein air stuff is, you know, about being with my and a little group of plein air friends and oh, uh -huh. and a lot of it's exploring because you can get to a place that you think is going to be beautiful but if the light's not right you just keep going mm -hmm. so that would be kind of the tough thing too is like follow my little dot on app on google maps <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, wow. somewhere. um and just uh, trying to think of ways for you to no, make more that. money and that we can get more of you <laughs> yeah. well, that's, that's great. um I'm now going to add some paint thinner and even lighten that. So I'm going to take my lights to another level, hopefully. So, Michael, I, what I've been aware of as you've been doing this is that, you know, I my problem is I or one of my problems. I can't get the um, the different levels um, of value that you get with just your your wiping away as you were. Um, and it's just a matter of pressure, right? I mean, you're intentionally going from the dark to a mid-tone again, or a, but I mean, now I, I mean, I can see that you're going quite light, but um, with alcohol, but before that, it's just yeah. pressure, right? I mean, lots of, lots of pressure. Yeah. Lots of pressure changes. Yeah. Where I want to pick up, I push a little harder or use a cleaner paper towel sometimes that you know when the paper towels get a little messy it's actually useful yeah look at that uh, all of a sudden that like that little bit of dark and that little bit of light really kind of you know opens it up but i just start with those two values uh, a lighter and a you know two, a, light, a lighter mid and a, a darker mid and uh then i come back in with my darks and now i can Start to reveal my lights. Mm. Beautiful. I need more blue paper towels. Just like magic. Yeah, those ones are more absorbent. So, yeah, and then you can imagine as you know. As it tacks up, I can start bringing in greens and yellows and ochres and everything else right over the top of this.
Yesterday, when I did my wipe away of the water, the ocean, I had blue paint on my nose, all the way to my toes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Elbows, all the way to my elbows. Yeah, my daughter came home from school yesterday, and she's in a drawing class in, at the local college. And she uh, was like, uh, I, I, you know, look at her. I'm like, oh, so you did charcoal drawing today. She's like, yeah. She's like, I'm the only person in there that gets covered in charcoal every time. I don't know how the other kids stay or other students um, stay clean. And I'm like, yeah, I never, ever figured that out. I, If I don't change my shirt when I get in the studio, it's going to be one more paint shirt. Mm -hmm. But also changing into my paint shirt puts me into the right mindset. It's part of the uh, putting on my costume, putting on my uniform. I I like that idea. I'm going to have to designate a paint shirt because now I have <laughs> paint on three or four shirts. You say if you wait, yeah, they'll self-designate. <laughs> Me. That's right. It's interesting working with the lights off. It is kind of helping me to simplify my values. Oof. It's like absolutely it. amazing what, what is coming through. It is just wipe out amazing. So, Michael, when you are taking the paintbrush and measuring down, I've seen you done it, in, I've seen you do it in many classes. Mm -hmm. Is that to locate where you're going to put reflections or? Okay. Using it to measure, using it to make straight lines, um, you know, or to make things straight up and down. Because a lot of times I'll think I'm putting the reflection yeah. straight down, but I don't actually know that I am until. Uh, so, yeah, it's just a, it's a tool. There's nothing worse than me making a nice painting of a sunset putting in my sun, stepping back and going, oh, my sun is two inches to the left in the reflection. It needs to be directly beneath. That's where my sun is gonna be kind of hidden back in there. So I'll bring some branches and stuff, you know, some debris back in front of it, but And it looks funny with that circle right in the middle of it. You can use, use this roughed up paper towel even to kind of hint at a little bit of a texture. I'm just kind of letting it, sorry, I'm blocking the camera. I can just let the, you know, where you want, Organic things, sometimes just use things that are a little out of your control, to kind of hint at the organic nature of some things, mm -hmm. just kind of break it up. So yeah, but it's starting, 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 isn't it? It's beginning mm -hmm. to reveal itself there. Michael, do you ever do um, kind of more traditional sort of very old school uh, glazing? where um, you actually use transparent colors um, built up over, you know, a kind of, um, I forget what they call it. There's a, an Italian word for, for the underpainting. Uh, Pardon? Grisaille? Yeah, well, yes. I mean, that's the French term for it. Yeah, grisaille, um, where, it, rather than putting um, actually opaque paint. I just remembered, I don't actually have to keep raising my hand, so I have <laughs> painting to me. Um, ye, no, I don't, um, but I sounds fun. It just sounds like it takes a lot of patience, and uh, also it takes a lot of, um, a, a lot more planning than I do right now, because it will get dark, right? Every additional layer of glaze makes it darker. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I just have to be aware of that. So I just have to plan accordingly. Um, but yeah, I definitely think about it. Um, I just haven't quite done it yet. Um, yeah, because I mean, when I think of glaze, the term glaze, I, I that's kind of what I more like a Vermeer. Yeah, think that it's going to be, you know, the actual transparent layers of color. Yeah, that, there are some that have, you know, more than one layer, of course, mm -hmm. uh, like that one that I did for that um, art school live. That will be more than one layer, just because the first layer was, you know, I ran out of time and then started teaching and da 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 da. So, you know, I'm, I'm just not happy with that layer. Um, and that very dark. <laughs> one painting attacked another painting. Mm -hmm. Too much. Yeah, no, I think it would be nice, but yeah, and um, yeah, a lot of my favorite artists did that. Maxfield Parrish, uh, Norman Rockwell. Um, uh, so yeah, there's definitely, I think it's great, but um, I also haven't quite figured out the mediums that if I do multiple layers, they just seem to do weird things on top of each other. So I don't, I need to figure out what medium would be the best for additional layers. This is the part that I kind of got to make up a little bit here. Now figuring out where that bank is actually. And I'll bring the reflections down. It's hard to see with the lights off, but um, you're sticking with, oh my goodness. Okay. Um, the darks being lighter and the lights being darker in the water. Sort of, yeah. And I'll keep wiping them back until that is the case, yeah. Um, yes, I try to, and it will help it read better generally. Um, but, you know, I can always alter that somewhat as I need to. Yeah, what is the shape here? And I'm gonna come back with opaque paint, I think, or maybe, Maybe I can do it with the wipe away and get some of this below. Let's see. Also, I'll come back in and cool that back hill ground hill down quite a bit um, by uh, adding some gray or blue or whatever. Once I start adding color, at least a little bit of color. So let's see if I can make this glowing archway here with just uh, some paper towels and Q-tips. And we'll, this will be a bit of a test. Back to the dark. What is the shape that I want? Little. Are you guys able to see that kind of where I'm kind of removing? I'm going to have something mm -hmm. above it, I think, because it doesn't, yeah, it's this shape here. That's what's wrong. So by doing this, I can kind of focus in and go, okay, why does it not look right? So it's in here. I'm going to make this bigger, slightly bigger mass. So that it doesn't look like just two branches reaching across and holding hands even though that's so nice. <laughs>
I read somewhere this week that trees are very supportive of each other and loving and kind. Yeah, they <laughs> actually send each other nutrients sometimes. Like if one tree's faltering and one tree's doing well, they can literally ask for help and one the other tree can send nutrients. Right. I, I read a horrible thing too um, that I shared with my daughter and she was very upset with me. And that's that tr when we cut trees or uh, things, they've actually found a way to hear hear them. And they actually hurt. <laughs> like they actually they they hurt. They cry. They, they, they cry. They know they've been cut. I was like, that is horrible. I, well, it just made me think about mowing the lawn. <laughs> just, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. I want an English garden. <laughs> I don't want to mow the lawn. Right. Pretty wild. Well, and the other thing is mushrooms, they give uh, nutrients to plants and Oregon happens to have the largest underground um, system of, um, uh, of mushrooms, uh, I think in the world. Yeah, I know, that's so amazing. The, uh, oh, I love that, the, uh, the mesh that's just underneath the top of the soil. Yeah. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I remember as a little kid, like laying on the you know floor of the forests and just <clears throat> digging up little handfuls and just seeing that yeah that interconnected superhighway of mm. nerve or whatever bundles that communicates. And they you know yeah, it's amazing. And the sweet I'm thing sorry. is, we're all energy and we're all connected to all energy. Yeah, yeah. love that. Love it and hate it. There's some things and some people out there that I'd rather not be a part of. Yeah, <laughs> that's so true. But it's our job to remind people of the beauty that exists and the mystery and the magic. If we are just willing to look for it. I literally write that as part of my my goal in life is just to kind of remind people. So it's really interesting, you know, having people look at my paintings and like, oh man, I drive past that every day. And then they'll, you know, next time I see them, they're like, man, I cannot drive past there without thinking about your painting and about that looking at it differently <laughs> and appreciating that thing. And that's, that's what, that's our gift as artists and stuff is that we do, we look deeper, we've trained ourselves or we just innately do whatever. And we just look deeper, we see deeper. And conversely, I think oftentimes we feel and see deeper, which is a good and a bad thing. Because, you know, yeah. it can be a little more fragile. And you know, Michael, teaching as you do, it's such a gift to all of us. Oh, yes. God, it, yes. And this is, there's no price that I could ever pay you for the gift of the knowledge that you share and the and the innocence that you 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 show us how you create it's just you know it's it's amazing you're amazing no, you're and this this is just true. a gift this is this is how we give back to humanity by doing what you're doing even though you're getting paid a small stipend for what you give to us well thank you yeah it's oh, interesting God, that is that's true you know, if I had to choose between teaching and painting, I would choose painting every time. But I do love teaching, and I think it definitely makes me a better painter. And and I love, you know, talking art. And, you know, if I'm just alone in the studio all, all the time, it's go crazy. But having a group to chat and people that are on the same journey and uh, care about the same things, is wonderful for me. It helps me from going mad, I think, a little bit here in the studio. But uh, yeah, what you were saying about gifts too is that, you know, I don't know whether it's a gift or whatever. I don't want to, you know, say anything like that. But I do believe in the, you know, if it's a gift, the gift is in the giving, right? The gift is in sharing. Yeah. Yes. And you do. You share, you share with us things that I've taken classes with other people that just are. They're there for the bottom line of the dollar of the day, basically, like what um, Susie was saying.
No, I think teaching costs me money a lot of the time, <laughs> but but I do love it and it's good for my soul and uh, everything else. So yeah, I, I just, you know, there's sometimes you just wish you had more lives or more time. And it's kind of funny, like, you know, I'm not, you know, old by any means, but I've definitely, you know, my daughter's moving out and I, you know, I'm like onto the third chapter of my life soon. And it's kind of like, wow, it's just, you know, time is, does matter. Time, I don't get to do it all. I have to start choosing and start focusing. And uh, yeah, but I, but hey, I, Michael, just remember that um, you may be launching your daughter, but they come back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Thanks. She brings a partner, children pass. Yeah, no, and I'm 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 very excited. I think just, I think her mom uh, or just dad. I'm out of money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially if she's gonna move to Boston or New York. Geez, I think Boston has like the well, highest. She do like the rest of us. She'll eat ramen noodles and you know, <laughs> peanut butter, and uh, she's a yeah. good cook, so she can turn those, live in a crummy place. Yeah, she can turn those simple things in. And I've been teaching her like how to make really nice fried rice. Uh, that's what I lived on. And I made so many friends because they were eating ramen and peanut butter and jelly. And then they'd come over and I'd have big bowls of fried rice, you know, and just a couple of eggs, a couple of onions. Some Those milk. are my favorite foods. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I and love we it. still live on I, 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 I cooked a turkey dinner one Thanksgiving for all the kids that were in the still in the dorm. <laughs> oh, wow. So you can do a lot. Yeah. Oh, wow. You cooked it in while you're in the dorm. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. There was a little kitchen area and yeah. you know, we're a bunch of us that lived out of state and we had Thanksgiving dinner. Great. That's awesome. Well, hey, guys, I'm not going to can't um, I'm not going to end the class. But I, I do need to take a little break. Um, so if you guys, you know, I don't even know if, how many are still here. Um, I will keep painting for, uh, let's say, another at least 40 minutes. Um, so, but I will keep recording it. Um, and I did not even get to critiquing and feedback, but I think that's what we're going to do pretty much the whole class, next, the last class. So I will even mm -hmm. probably be doing more than one painting. Um, so anyways, if you have to go, uh, you know, I can't believe you guys are still here a half hour longer, but I will keep painting. I just need to take a little break um, for okay. a bit. So uh, I'll see you guys in oh. five minutes or so. And again, I'll just keep it recording. And okay. um, if you're here, yeah. awesome. If not, I'm I completely, completely understand. I appreciate all the time you've given me today. And um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, We'll uh, get yeah, to all I got to sign off, but thank you so much. God, thank Bye. you so much. And I'm going to embarrass Michael, maybe, but uh, I have, I, it's, I don't have it to send, but I had a teacher that is no longer with us. She passed, but she said, it's exactly what Linda said. Um, Michael Orwick is a fabulous painter. You will learn a lot from him. You're lucky to have him. Oh, and I know who that's from. So it's doubly meaningful. Yeah, I read it to you once before. It's in an email I have. I could send that to you and you can put it on your website. <laughs> <laughs> that's so sweet. Yeah, um, it's fun seeing it on the monitor. Take a break. I, I don't know how to, to. Okay, it's not in my email box. I could print it. I could, if you want it, I can go ahead and um, scan it in. All right. I would do that. Do a screen. What I did. <laughs> I have to wait a minute. I'll take a picture and put it on Padlet or something. Yeah, Dorothy. Uh, she just thought the world of Michael. I know I'm embarrassing him. No, she was a sweetheart. Well, she was a master painter, but. Uh, So she would know what she was talking about. Mm -hmm. That is gorgeous. It's wonderful. I love this. Yeah. Take That's a break, cool. Michael, I mean, if you need to. I mean, 
for a 36 by 48, the ability to block it in in about an hour, wow. um, two hours. I mean, I've really got a good roadmap on which to keep building this thing. But yeah, you can imagine what will happen when I bring blues and grays and some greens over the top and, uh, you know, get into the shadows, make those cooler. Transforming. Linda, you said Michael was so generous, no doubt. I don't know, I, I have to say something. When you taught at OSA and took Dorothy's classes, you came up to me and said you want to donate to do, donate the pay for this class to Dorothy. Oh yeah. And I want you to all know that he was so altruistic willing to do that. Oh, that was my pleasure. I love Wonderful. To try to give back and it's exactly what Linda said. You're very generous. I, I don't know where that came from, Michael. It just came from my heart. Oh, not from the script I sent you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, are you oh, going to make oh, chocolate oh. chips for Michael? <laughs> I, I just made some chocolate chip cookies last night. Yeah. Send them. I, wish I, could, I wish I could share them with you guys. You can send them to Oregon. We all live in, some of us live in the same city. <laughs> oh, I wish I, I will. Give me your address. I'll send you chocolate chip. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, no chocolate chips for me. I don't, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I got one of these on now. Oh, for the diabetes. Oh, uh, no diabetes, luckily. I just uh, knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I'm working with a a, a doctor, a naturopath, to okay. uh, figure out. But I do definitely have some insulin sensitivity, so uh, I'm doing a very low insulin, and it sure helped. Man, my my brain. I've just got so much more energy. Really? Uh, really? It's, yeah, I'm just. What I, I, What are you having? That insulin. Huh? Uh, is no, that insulin? insulin. Uh, uh, yeah, well, insulin. Uh, is that what it's called? What sugar, anyways? Yeah, I don't know what they do now. Um, my mother uh, was diabetic and had to do injections, but that she's uh, like, been gone. And, um, but I'm insulin resistant. Okay, you're yeah. fine. Yeah, and it's no, kind it, of nice because I've watched you know family members get bigger and slower and. Yeah, less me too. Slower. My mother. Oh. Yeah, and so I just wanted to attack it and just figure it out because I, I need a lot of energy to do all the things I want to do and I want to be healthy and uh, proud of you that's good deal my yeah so, happy to hear that that you're taking control of your life super well, again, it's part of getting older you just kind of gotta you know it, it's easier now than later and uh, I would rather I don't want to become diabetic because one of the things that happens to diabetics is eyesight mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah I'm pretty dependent on my eyesight for what yeah, I Yeah, really. Um, well, you're taking the right steps. We're all proud of you. Oh, yeah. No, it's working great. Everything's everything's working amazingly. It was just some little tw little tweaks. And uh, everything is feeling better and sleeping better. I'm Good. Much Good. more able to focus for longer periods of time. I'm, so uh, do you have a special diet that you you have to eat? Well, I mean, yeah, this week, especially I'm on a, uh, I'm on a bit of a cleanse that's prescribed, but that's just, so what we're doing is seeing if there's other food allergies that I might also have. 
And it does definitely seems like tomatoes and some of my favorite foods um, do affect me. So we're basically you get rid of every food that's uh, possibly an allergen hmm. and then we'll add them back slowly. So that's what's nice working with a, a naturopath uh, who kind of uh, specializes in this. She lost her mom to something similar. So she's kind of made yeah. it her life mission to figure it out and figure out how to help as many people as possible. Is she in Portland or is she with like the hospital or? She, her office is so close to your house, so close. I literally drive probably right by your house to get there. You're almost. kidding. She's not Scott Gelotli's wife, is she? <laughs> she is oh my god she's at the corner <laughs> i ought to see her yeah. yes scott's my neighbor too near Rollywood school so really so that's good to hear that because i thought about seeing his wife oh she's amazing yeah she's helped all three of us my daughter um suffered from adhd and uh dyslexia and was like getting oh wow school. even though she works hard she just was having a lot of issues with school and they figured it out in a couple little twists. She went from F's to straight A's. And kept oh, my up. God. So, yeah, I, I met her about two years ago, and her office is like six houses from my house, right go. across from a uh, Jesuit, actually. Yep, yep. That's so it. she's a natural path. I remember that I should make an appointment to see her, too. She's amazing. Okay. Yeah, she's very caring. Everything's very personal. Yeah, very sweet girl. Yeah, she really is. What's her name? I'm nervous because Scott and I are good friends to go to see his wife. But, uh, you know, it was worth it. Get over my fear. I kept telling her, I'm like, I'm really scared to do this. But, man, I'm oh. glad I did. And I just followed everything she says exactly, exactly. So walking every day, working out every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all the different things that you kind of, a lot of it's, you know, stuff you know you should be doing. Um, but, uh what is her name? What's her name? Dr. It's not Glatley. Um, no, it's different than his name, but she's very sweet. I met her. She's like six houses from my house at the corner. Yeah, I call her I Dr. To make an appointment to see her myself. But yeah, she's Tanya to me, but. She goes by a different name. I could. Isn't yeah. she in that light yellow building or something? It's a big gray building, if I remember right. It's not right sure if I remember, but it's like he said, and like it was turned out, it was like at the corner of my house because I live six you houses know, from the corner. I'm so happy to hear that. That's good news. Yeah. So at least I'll be able to paint or teach a little longer. Thank mm. God. Good for you, Michael. I'm proud of you. That's I wonderful. Know, I know it's aging too quickly, like artificially fast. You know, I know you, we all age and everything else, but it just felt, and I just remember kind of seeing some of my relatives kind of start to go down the same road. And, you know, they didn't, some of them took care of it more, but some didn't. And so it's an interesting thing what, what, what's in the family, because there's a lot of amazing things in my family too, but you got to take the good with the bad when it comes to your DNA and your everything else and everything, you know, we're lucky. We got a lot more science. We figured a lot of stuff out and having this like glucose monitor is really interesting just to see what actually sends my glucose up. Glucose yeah. monitor. Does anybody know the documentary, What the Health? What is it? I what? It oh, I saw that. That is the scariest thing. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah. Well, but except that it, it underscores just because you've got certain DNA or certain family traits, you don't yeah. have to have that control your life. There are things you can do. Yeah, yeah. Did you see it, Michael? I think it was on Netflix. I saw it. I like think that. I have, yeah. She sent me a couple documentaries to watch, um, Food Matters and a couple others, um, Grain Brain and stuff like that. So yeah, for me, it, the biggest thing was just getting off all refined carbs. Basically, there's, you know, I can have, you know, right now I'm on almost no carbs, but um, besides just tons and tons and tons of vegetables, which are great because I'm learning all these new ways to cook them and make them awesome. Hmm. There's uh, another one called the Game Changers that would really be great for you, Mike. The Game Changers. Very interesting. 
Very interesting. Yeah, look at that. It's it's you know it's coming along piece by gorgeous. piece. Gorgeous. I kind of step back the painting kind of it's like it's just again like the the Polaroid just kind of comes into focus a little bit more each time as I just start to kind of refine pick out edges um you're sculpting away yeah and it's you know the nice thing is I can you know if I over sculpt I can add stuff back right um, yeah like that and uh Michelangelo wished he could have done that right yeah 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 <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you know what I call my uh, my little workout area I've set up in the garage? No. What? Michelangelo's studio. Oh, there. <laughs> because I'm chip, chip, chipping away. Uh <laughs> Wonderful. Hey, Craig, come here and look at this painting. It's gorgeous. Sorry, didn't know I had my sound on. All right. And she wants to go to Italy. <laughs> yeah. We know what <laughs> are you coming linda are you coming too you know i want to come so bad it would be so wonderful to be there especially in that luca area it is so fantastic oh yeah tuscany is just otherworldly it's just i did it tuscany is one of those places we did it when we did our big trip around the world that i just kind of almost wasn't looking forward to because i just thought for sure it was too overhyped you know, there's no way it was going to live up to, you know, and I just thought, you know, oh, you've seen all the beautiful spots and you've seen all the beauty, but nope, it completely, it's completely a strangely magical place that I just, I think about often. And, you know, I think even some of the light that I put in my paintings was influenced by my time that I've been there twice now. And I, I just spend so much time just watching the light and there's a there's similarity to the light in the Pacific Northwest when we actually have good weather, <laughs> but uh, but it's definitely different being close to the Mediterranean and having the Alps there and everything else really just seems to do something. And then so we I, have I love how they preserve it. Like there's just whole areas like where you're only allowed to build, you know, rebuild old buildings. You have to use traditional methods and everything else. That's one of the reasons actually I kind of got dissuaded from getting a place in Italy, at least as of yet, is um, is that uh, you can only hire Italians to work on it and you have to, you know, use so repairing old villas and stuff, you can get them fairly oh, yeah. expensive, but it's really expensive and really slow going to uh, repair. That's why sometimes I think people can buy them for a song, <laughs> oh, yeah. they were selling you know, but, but then they, then they've got years of renovation and and headache ahead of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the the one that I was looking at was another like 10, 10 um, because I was like, man, what if I did buy one and fix it up and I could have you know literally teach classes, have people come to me, and uh, you know, and there was a ten bedroom one that wasn't too far, you know, and they advertised the swimming pool and everything else but you could just totally tell that you know it was going to cost you know hundreds and hundreds of thousands i think i could have bought the the whole villa plus property for like um i think it was like a hundred thousand dollars wow <laughs> I was like man if i sold my house you know i could buy a couple of these villas um, yeah and but the amount of work and that's where he luckily was really honest with me he's like man you are just waiting you're in line because there's just not enough of these craftsmen builders and uh you know and then the supplies you know you want to use you know so anyways you sign big contracts when you buy these really inexpensive places but it's worth it to them because they want them preserved yeah so last summer we uh went to tuscany and we have a hilton timeshare and they have like a sister program with rci yeah. So we stayed in Tuscany and day tripped everywhere and it was fantastic. Isn't it? It's just, yeah, it's every time I'm there, I'm just like, it's like literally on the first day I'm there, I'm always like, oh, I do not want to leave. <laughs> you know, you're counting down the days. It's just like, oh, shoot, time's going too fast. There's too much to see. And you can just get in the car and go and you're going to run into amazing, interesting, beautiful places. Absolutely. And we saw places that 
weren't, you know, the typical touristy towns that I was just amazed. It was fabulous. Right. Like the only thing that's open is the bakery run by a couple locals. And oh, I love it. Like the whole. Oh, cool. Towns. Yeah. The only thing, um, a, a very well kept secret. I have a friend who bought a house there. She can buy a house there, but you cannot have a car. You may not buy a car hmm. unless you are Italian. So she had to go through all of these hoops to. Seriously? Seriously. You cannot right. own a car if you're not Italian. So she. How do you get to the market and go? Well, oh, that's a very good question. She actually like. On the books, she said her neighbor gave her a car, but she had to <laughs> like pay her under the table. There couldn't be any. I said, well, how did you transfer over the title? And she said, well, I didn't. It's still in my neighbor's name, but basically, <laughs> I don't you know. Can rent, you can rent cars there, so that doesn't. You can work. rent a car, but you cannot purchase one for your own. Driving in Italy is pretty fun, but uh, that's weird. I wonder why that would be the case. Um, I, can yeah, ask. I, I know that, you know, has that villa where I'm going to teach the workshop. He has a number of cars. Like he's, he's got some old BMWs and like mm. I drove, I drove a, like a <laughs> giant bus when I was there that it was his. Uh, he took Maybe the, when Britain was part of the EU, he was able to do that. Right. Well, you know, my wife's an uh, EU member, so maybe we can get around some of that. Yeah. Or maybe he just drove it from, you know, drove it from another country in the, uh, yeah. I'll have to ask him about that. I never. Yeah, I, yeah, that would work if he drove it in, maybe. I don't know. Or does he have dual citizenship? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. But maybe, maybe by now he does. But that was back when he was just first moving there. Yeah, he was so, <laughs> so cool. Like he's just like, I can't wait to show you this. And I can't wait to show you the work we did on this. <laughs> Been a number of years. That's great. Plans when I was there. So I'm excited to. Uh, to see all the upgrades and changes and everything else. Michael, I'm really loving what you've got going here. Um, can I can I tell you there's one part of it that bothers me? Please, no, better now than later. Sheesh, yeah. Um, right where you just had your hand uh, at the far end of the stream, it's um, that light shape is so, um, it's a triangle and and it's just it's like almost like a straight line my eye just keeps going there are you saying where the water ends no the whole the whole light shape no no the in the water the water okay. yes yeah, it's, yeah, it's very I'm... geometric where everything else in the and you know that's just me no 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 that's great that's great feedback you know, and everything else is so organic, and that part there feels geometric. Yeah, and I, that's the part that's going to be a little bit of a struggle for me. I can already see it. Hmm. I spent a little more time with my planning, or maybe I just need to start adding in. You know, probably just a few, I mean, if I were doing it, just a few little lines moved. Yeah, let's bring this like. I never know when it's appropriate to say something. Always appropriate. And of course, you know, you're the person standing there <laughs> wearing your arm out painting. I'm not. Well, so. yeah, um, I'm not stepping back nearly as much as I, sorry, I'm standing right in front of the camera. I'm not stepping back as much as I would at all. Like when I paint um, <laughs> performance style like this, um, I just don't. I don't take the time to step back because I don't want empty air, as it were. Right, right. So you don't. So I don't get as good or as clear a vision on um, mm -hmm. of things, you know. Because a lot of times by now I would have taken multiple five, ten minute breaks where I'd literally just be sitting on the little bench across from here, right. and you know take I might check the email or two, look up, you know, pet the cat, look up, you know, and you get fresher mm -hmm. eyes. No, yeah. I appreciate that completely, and. I am very tough skinned now. I've been doing this and heard a thousand mean things and a million no's and you know, all the things I just, 
Yeah, no, I, and I, I appreciate it. And the other thing is, the, the easiest time to fix a paint, uh, fix a something, a mistake is always right away. Right, that's true. Getting the paint way out of a thing is a lot harder later. Right now, everything's mobile. I could literally pull out the whole tree. I could, you know what I mean? It's still wet yeah. enough. I'm still able to just keep finessing. So, nope, I appreciate it. That was my long way of saying that. Thank you. Yeah, I've started using my little mirror. Yeah. I'm unable to step back too far from my easel and um, just getting as far away as I can and looking back with my mirror really helps me spot the weird creatures that I create <laughs> in my yeah. work. Balance and yeah, it's yeah, it's great. And the, the, the good thing about this class is I literally have the monitor up. So I actually find myself looking at the it's, you know, this big yep. like off there like a thumbnail on a on a computer screen I'm standing so far away from it. Excuse me. I never did take a break. <laughs> Just step back for a second, like, oh, there's something. Oh, there's something. Anyways. Can you explain how the mirror works? Just great. Um, it's simply step, turn away from your painting and hold the mirror up, you know, in front of you. So imagine the painting's behind me. I'd hold the mirror up like this, and all of a sudden you just see it in reverse. You can also do it like if I'm playing air painting. I can, let's see if we can make it work here. I'm gonna see if I can put the camera up so I want it black. So I take my uh, phone and out in daylight, I don't just, I don't turn the screen on. I see it with the black screen and it's reflective and I can just see the painting in reverse. Um, so that's a little cheap version of a mirror, um, but you're just seeing it in reverse. It just gives you fresh eyes on it. Another thing is just taking a picture on your camera and looking at it a little tiny like that. Well, make any big and obvious shapes that are wrong kind of begin to reveal themselves. And uh, yeah, like there's lots of little tricks. A lot of people just hold it in a mirror, like a big mirror if you got one in your house there. All right. Well, I am starting to wind down a little bit here. Um, I don't want to be start making big mistakes or anything. So I think I will take a little break, go get some breakfast and um, and uh, leave it there. So let me turn off the lights again so we can see it. Or maybe if I just move the camera to in front of it, get rid of some of that glare a little bit. Have you been to Arles, France during your travels? I don't know. It's southern <laughs> France where um, Van Gogh hung out. Oh, no, no, no. You said France. No, I've never been to southern France. Yeah, the, the light really there is totally incredible. You, that you understand. Nice or whatever? Yes, you understand why all the artists went there. It really is um, an unusual, different light than anywhere else. Just yeah. amazing. Oh, good. I'm so excited then. I'm going you. there. <laughs> you will love it. I I just, I didn't want to leave. And I mean, I love, I've been to Tuscany and loved it, you know, all over Italy, loved it. But, but the light in Southern France really is what all of the, um, the old masters said it was. It's just unbelievable in a lot of ways. So. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. We were supposed to go there, but we ended up going to um, Mallorca and uh, we got a free house and a free car. So we ended up just staying there for a lot longer because otherwise we were going to do that road trip from uh, Spain over to uh, Italy. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely on the books. I really, so much. I, I mean, Europe is amazing. It is. There's so much to see. 
Mm -hmm. I, I wish your class and Susan's class were closer together so I could just stay there. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's I, not going to work this year. <laughs> yeah, that would be awesome. In Umbria now in, Tust uh, in Italy, boy, that's really unbelievable as well. It's like Tuscany, a little bit on steroids, but with no tourists. Just Umbria? In Umbria, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really incredible. The Adriatic coast too, no Americans go there, mm. but, but it is just beyond outstanding. Um, lots of good like What country? Italy, in Italy on the Adriatic coast. So you have Bari and then all along that Southern coast, there's all these amazing little towns like um, Imbaragala. That's where all the truly homes are. Have you seen those with the little points? Yes, I love them. Just incredible. My husband and I stayed in one. It was sort of like the best. It was so fun. And then uh, also Matera, which is, um, it was a cave city. And uh, a lot of Italians lived in this city in the caves with no plumbing, no electricity, no anything. And so sometime in the 70s, Italy decided it was such a great embarrassment to them that they made all the people move out and they actually put in plumbing and, and electric. And so now you can go there as a tourist and it's it's also so, so amazing. Just hey, we've never I, seen something like that here, you know. We stayed in, are they the white caves? No, those are different ones. Oh. Matera is, um, it's way off the beaten path for one thing, but it's it's an entire, cave city is it's, it's quite huge actually uh yeah we airbnb a cave and stayed in it it was really cool it was all domed inside and yeah it was so fun but very interesting and americans you know we we pretty much go to the same place so as soon as you get way off the beaten track there's so much there just germans <laughs> no not even germans nope they go to Mallorca. Germans go to Mallorca. That's their favorite hangout. <laughs> uh, Russians and Germans, yeah. <laughs> they love Mallorca. I don't know. Okay, but no, it's, it's the British just, like uh, like the southern Italy. They, they love to go to right. The Amalfi yeah, the Amalfi Coast. They take over. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Amalfi is amazing, but yeah, it was so so many people. I just. It was scary to walk along the sides of the roads and the cliffs. Can't go there in the summer. You no, can't. Crazy. Yeah. I mean, it was nice. We stayed in one of the lesser villages or whatever on the way right before Amalfi. And so it was really quiet in our village and it was really nice. But yeah. Yeah. You have to go there either shoulder season or winter even is fine. I mean, it's it's too hot for me anyway in the summer. So I don't care. But yeah. It's something else. So I'm just uh, brushing it back out again to, um, and it's just really soft. You know, I don't care. It's going to kind of blend and blur some edges and stuff because I'll come back in and um, keep refining the detail. But just I'll, I'll blend this out so that you guys can get a, hopefully the glare is kind of going away. I opened the window to let light in. I don't think it's too much. So is this to unify shapes or? What I'm just kind of blending and blurring. Yeah. I'm mostly just trying to take the glare away so you guys can get a good. <laughs> okay. It's just, yeah, if I put all the brush strokes horizontally, vertically, I'm sorry, vertically, it seems to take a lot of that glare down. Need a darker blinds. Oh, I have blinds. Got those. Well, be pure dark in here. Really beautiful. There we go. So, yeah, it is. That's well. Wow. The sun will be right up here, reflecting down here. Um, and then I'm hoping that it looks like it's coming down through the arch, kind of coming down, catching here. That's going to catch on the tops of these grasses here. And that will hopefully kind of lead the eye in. I may let a little bit of light, you know, maybe kind of. Come back through here, touch. Um, yeah, and then I'll have to do the same thing into the reflections. So I'll have some of that light reflecting down into here. Uh, 
That's what I'm missing. The reflected light on those grasses. Um, yeah. All right. I think it's lunchtime, folks. Phew. Um, yeah, I apologize. I get everything takes longer. This is a long class. We still didn't get to all your beautiful work. Um, I will huh, do my best to get over there and comment on it. And otherwise, next class, I just will do critiques first and see if we have any time to do finishing work. I do want to demonstrate some of that. I know that uh, a couple of students have been kind of mentioning that you're always starting paintings. So I'd like to show how I might finish off something if it's this one or another one and bring in detail brushes and grasses and texture and add color over the top. But truthfully, I think for a lot of us as beginners or you know a little earlier on in our stages, this is invaluable. Mm -hmm. Again, I could just say that this is still the beginning. I don't know why it's not in focus. Maybe I'll just turn the light on. Um, I don't know. Uh, focus on my hand. Um, the beginning is the most important for so long. You know, we want to give so much credit to the end, but it's really, I really like the motto of well begun is halfway done. Mm -hmm. And, it's imp you know, it's so important that we get our design and our structure and our values. I mean, there's other ways to approach a painting like you were asking, Vivian. I could definitely go into the color really quickly, but I do find that, again, just my way, whether it's being dyslexic or just how my brain works, I do better when I, um, I think values primarily, and then yeah. I let others uh, develop, but other artists can definitely, you know, um, uh, what's his name? Kevin McPherson is definitely mm -hmm. a colorist, thinks color first. Um, you know, my painting style is not for everybody, but I think um, at least having this knowledge in your brain as you move forward is really important. Just you know, it's rarely the colors that are, you know, getting us in too much trouble. It's usually our design and our value structure. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, to me, this is complete, you know, in terms of, of a, a finished painting in a way, you know, I mean, this process that you do without having to go to color. Yeah, I think what it could use is some cools, mm -hmm. you know, cools in the you dark know, and... You know, you know, a little bit of contrast, some cool maybe at the top of the sky, just mm -hmm. so that it's not just all super hot. It just makes, you know, again, I like to say if, you know, everything's special, nothing's special. If everything's glowing, nothing's glowing. If everything's, you know, if everything's yellow and red, then the yellow and red aren't special. So. No, you're right about that. But I mean, it just points out, for instance, that um, that mountain in the background on the left between two sets of trees yeah um, you know you talked about wanting to cool it down but look at how the value shift pushes it back i mean you know the value is so important yeah in my belief that again thinking of that food pyramid mm -hmm. you know if yeah. you just put, put design first values and then, you know, as your way up and but we, you know, brush strokes, which is what this class is named after is, um, you know, it's the very, very top, you mm -hmm. know, it's the detail, the textures are the very last, but they do get so much credit because that's what we see. It's the thing on the top. It's the, you know, it's the little finesse that really helps to sell it. But without a good underpainting, without a good structure and a design and strong values, none of that matters. Exactly. Exactly. It would and fall apart, paint. you know, if it didn't have, it's a foundation. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. You can build a beautiful house in the sand and it'll just fall down, but yeah, you need that foundation. Yeah. And yeah, it's, yeah, so important. So, 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 so important. So. Michael, could you, could you record yourself finishing this one so we could see it? Like and add it to this, to the, to the class for this? Yeah, can I, I might do it at fast forward my because I record on my phone typically um, and I just don't have the space, um, but I could try to figure out maybe I can even just set up a zoom call with myself. <laughs> um, there you go. <laughs> yeah, uh, Thursday. I don't know we can meet back up tomorrow morning and I'll just do another one we'll just keep working. Um, 
So if you guys are interested in that, maybe I'll, I'll be here at nine. Um, let me think about that and I will send it out to our Padlet or send everybody an email because that just forces me to keep painting and get it done because um, I would like to get this one done. Um, so yeah, what we can do is just yeah. like we did with the Masterius group is just kind of a pain a long time. So maybe you guys have to commit to painting during that time too. We should compensate you if you're going to do it tomorrow. I, I don't think it's fair that you work for nothing. <laughs> it's not working for nothing. It's okay. paying for nothing. <laughs> Plus, Linda said she's going to send cookies, so we're good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put some walnuts in it. Right, right. Well, yeah, with it's, walnut. it's twofold, um, but we'll see. I, I don't promise because I don't really, I need to, okay. I, quite literally between now and the end of next month, have six days that I'm at home. So I kind of got to figure out exactly what is the best and most important use of my time. I'm also designing a bunch <laughs> of advertising. I'm making a trifold. Uh, brochure and wow. two uh, flyers because of the plain air convention and then a, a couple three other things that are coming up that I'd like to have stuff to hand out and start promoting and I, one of the uh, flyers I'd like to make for Italy because I need to you know normally you have a full year to promote and advertise a class um, take your flyer about Italy to the plain air convention exactly that's what I'm trying to get all that done and I need to send that in well before I get there. So um, I'm working, I actually, so the other thing is those guys that I've been talking about is um, they're just like, you do too much. You're doing, you're trying to do everything on your own. And you know, you need to hire, you, you know, if I want to keep making videos, I should be hiring an editor. I should be hiring, you know, these other people. And there's like, you know, you should at least be hiring a marketing person um, right. to be doing a lot of this stuff. And I'm like, oh, I can't afford a marketing person. They're like, how much is your your time's worth so much more doing the thing that you love and the thing that you're good at and this other person's good at that and loves it you know so i i actually went and hired a marketing person uh this last about two weeks ago and we're working we worked yesterday and we're working today um and then uh yeah and then i have the nice assistant that's helping me with the mentorship program and uh yeah it's really nice to find that so you know and you you guys can see with my writing and stuff it's i can use all the help i can get with uh clarity and all of that so yeah that's it's kind of like just again with my health too it's like okay i put a team together you know people that know what they're doing and like doing what they're doing and that I way i can you. paint more <laughs> no i admire you for you know taking it on and and deciding where it is that you aren't able to do it just all by yourself and and you're moving forward. You're not, you're not going backwards. You're not standing still. You're moving forward. And hopefully, you know, hopefully all of it is a bit of an investment. It's money up front, but hopefully it pays dividends. And um, and I'm also learning. That's the other thing is working with this designer. You know, she's walking me through a lot of what she she'll do it, and then she comes back and walks me through it and kind of explains why she's doing what she's doing and kind of like, oh, that's really cool. Otherwise, I have all these ideas of all or all these should do's in my head. Right. Time, but making time or finding time or um yeah yeah that's the worst thing i have <laughs> don't should all over yourself there you go yeah exactly don't should. so yeah. so we should, should say yourself. so long awesome. so you can but, get yeah. on with your you guys yeah. are awesome. always always fun always a pleasure and uh yeah you know i i please go and look at each other's beautiful work and uh you know comment um you know, feel free to even give some feedback if you uh, see something that you know, notice. Pretend you're me. <laughs> go in there and it, it's really useful to go in and uh, analyze other people's work. We learn, you know, both from the, yes, that's an amazing idea. They're so clever to do that. And from the, you know, thank goodness I don't have to make that mistake because I'm noticing so-and-so did it. And wow. uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's keep, you know, um, we'll, we have one more class, hopefully maybe tomorrow. And, um, you know, I'll keep the Padlet alive. You guys, just keep sharing your work. I'll try to get over, you know, every once in a while and see it. And uh, we'll have all, all summer. And, oh my um, gosh, thank you. Let's, you know, we've, we've created a really nice little community here. Oh, and, God, uh, yes. Let's keep it going. And, um, yeah, you guys are awesome. I really do. Irina, what time is it in Sweden? She's still up. Oh, no, you woke her up. Oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, but it's no, it's not so late. It's uh, twenty-two. 
what, what time is it? Uh, ten, 10, 10 p.m. Well, wow, that's super. I'd be sleeping. No, I I, I go to bed eleven or twelve, <laughs> or maybe <laughs> one o'clock. Well, we know what you'll be dreaming about tonight. Yeah, for sure. Well, is thanks. Mass, isn't mass trees tonight or today? Mm, I hope so. That would be great. I was like, uh, I see you in a few hours. That means Irene. No, I think Mastrius today. Yes, today. It is. Is it? <laughs> no, I mean uh, mentorship. I is it today? No, I think it's. I think, I think it's next. Uh, next week. Next Okay. Yeah, but I, but I do need to move it because that's when I'm coming right. home. So okay. I'm planning to move that to Thursday. Um, I think mm -hmm. that um, Leanne sent out a announcement asking. I, I mentioned it to her. And then the next month after that, unfortunately, I will be in Colorado or fortunately for the plain air convention. So I'd also like to move that one. But we have a, a fifth week in that month. So I think I'll just move it to the last week. Um, I'll be there with you. At the yes, and I will too, Michael. <laughs> You're going to be there? Awesome. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, Elisa and Shelly and I will be out getting drunk when we're supposed to be on. <laughs> 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 oh, sure. Is that a new nutritional plan? Come on. I was going to say, is <laughs> that, that what, what you're know it, at that, doing? I know at that altitude, it'll just take one drink for me and I'll be still have a headache in the morning. Oh, my yeah. God. So, I so, live I live at the altitude, so I could I could I can. Yeah, we'll just watch you, Lisa. I, I can have your one. Yeah, I was gonna say, you'll just be like, are you gonna finish that? You gonna finish that? <laughs> so, uh, Michael, thank you a million for this day, and then um, just keep me in mind if there's an opening in the master class, which I don't think there ever will be one, but. <laughs> Well, we will see. Yeah. And I'm just looking, um, Leanne just sent an email. So far, only two students have responded. So Lisa and Shelly, if you have not responded to mm -hmm. her, let her know that next Thursday, um, that would be great. Uh, just so yeah, I think I, I think I responded. I'll check though. Okay. Because I'm just going to plan on it because she wants to do it the next week after that. But again, I'm, I'm gone all, all next month. You said uh, you're going to Mexico. Are you doing a, uh, a workshop there? No, no, that's friends and family. My parents oh, okay. have a big uh, house that they get every year. Oh, wow. A okay. whole bunch of people. So my sister, her family, my parents, and then two families of friends are all coming out. Cool. And what part of Mexico do you guys go to? Oh, that's just Cabo. Oh, the super, not super simple, not, kind of boring. Well, not where Sinaloa is, and no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> right. No, no, nothing. Nothing exciting. Um, yeah, and we don't even hardly get off the resort much. It's a huge. That's nice. Place. I love Zihuataneo. That's another good place to go. It's a mm. small fishing village. Yeah, sounds awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop the recording, but we can keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Have a 